بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا ثم بعد قال تعالى إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد ما بردن سيستر بإذن الله تعالى الحمد لله um, I wrote this book called Seerah is the answer because in my study of the Seerah uh, over several years what struck me above many other things was the similarity between the times of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and our present times today i am speaking to you from america i am in the state of connecticut in the northeast um i thought i would do this video outside because uh, we have the autumn season the fall season the leaf turning season and behind me is one of these beautiful bushes the qudrat of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Uh, see how the color of the leaf how bright and wonderful it is so all praise to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all thanks to him that he granted us hidayah through muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam so as i was saying to you what struck me was this fact of the similarity between nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam's time and our time now as you read the book you will see i have uh, specifically mentioned what these similarities are and the similarities seem to be in multiple ways for example uh, we have a similarity with regard to uh, political systems with regard to financial systems with regard to um, how business uh, and commerce is done uh, and was done uh, with regard to social uh, organization of society social customs and practices uh, both the goods and bads of it and so on and so forth um, now why is this important why is this similarity important because what happened in the 7th century in the time of nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam was that here was a bunch of people a group of people who started off from being uh, the most hated uh, reviled um oppressed weakest least influential uh and they became in a period of just one single generation the opposite of that which is the most influential uh the most powerful uh, role models for society now how did that happen if you look at the seerah of nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam Uh, if you take the time of Umar ibn al-Khattab when uh, the Muslim Futuhat, uh, the expansion of the of the uh, Rashidun Khilafah uh, was at its peak uh, and the and both the superpowers of the time the Persian Empire and the Roman Empire had both fallen to uh, the uh, to, to the armies of uh, Khalid bin Walid radiallahu anhu and to the armies of the Rashidun Khilafa uh, you find it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's the same generation as Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so it was in a period of just one generation that these people moved from being the least to being the most now big question how did that happen um and why is that important because if we learn how that happened and if we can inculcate those things in our lives today then i believe that that is a solution to our problems also because if you take the muslims globally speaking illa mashallah we are today um, in all on all of these parameters at the same place as the muslims were in the makkan period of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam's life uh, we are the if you, if you take uh, muslims in uh, living in uh, western countries uh, like america and, and elsewhere you take muslims in india you may take muslims elsewhere and also globally muslims if you take it even though our numbers are huge uh, we are the owners of or est- or at least ostensibly apparently the owners of a lot of resources and a lot of wealth uh, this seems to do us little good uh, we um, we are the victims 
of our own follies. Now, if we look at the life of Rasulullah, the solution is right there. And it's not just a solution in terms of, uh, you know, a theory or uh, some philosophy, but it is a tried and tested, documented solution which worked and therefore it is my contention that inshallah it will work in today's world also. Now, that is the purpose of writing this book. Um, this book, as you will see, is not organized uh, in a chronological sense because alhamdulillah there are, uh, there is no dearth of the uh, seerah of Rasulullah no dearth of the biographies of Rasulullah uh, There are great scholars who have written lots of things about the blessed life of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So we have all the chronological details and so on. I have taken specific incidents from his blessed life and I have tried to illustrate how these incidents and so on, uh, how they show us what to do in our times today. So the application of the seerah is what I am concerned about and that is the reason I wrote this book. The book, as you see, is also organized uh, in sections, the eight sections. And at the end of each section, you will find that there is a um, action planning section where I have asked you to do two things. One is I have asked you to list what actions you believe uh, you will do and what you will do differently, what you will take from the life of Rasulullah and apply in your life. And I've asked you to look at that in the context of what is easy to do and what is difficult to do and to think of solutions of how to apply that. It's a great um, tragedy and to me it's a matter of great um, astonishment that the Sira is not taught as a serious, proper, full subject even in our Darul Looms and in our Madaris and in our Jamiat. Now let alone in our Muslim schools and so on and so forth. It is not taught as a specific subject and I, com I completely fail to understand why that happens. Because the seerah of Rasulullah the biography of Rasulullah the life of Rasulullah is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself told us to study where Allah said, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرَ وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this beautiful ayah where Allah told us and ordered us specifically to study the seerah of his Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to study his life, and he said, this is the best example for you. Now, when Allah has recommended something, when Allah told us to do something, and we don't do it, uh, I don't understand why, why don't we do it? Now, people give all kinds of excuses. They say, oh, but you see the students, they learn from something about the seerah through, uh, when they study hadith, and they learn something of the seerah, when they study Asbab and Nuzul of the Quran. My point is, why must they learn something of the Sira? Why don't they learn the whole Sira? You are teaching all kinds of subjects. Why don't you teach the life of Muhammad Sallallahu as a serious, proper subject in your Darul Ulooms and Madaris and Jamiat? And Wallah, if you don't do that, you will answer to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. This is my contention. So my, my, my big um, request uh, and my demand to people who are running these religious institutions is, Teach the seerah, teach the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I'm not asking you to teach my life. I'm asking you to teach the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, on whom you have brought iman and I have brought iman. So teach the life of Rasulullah sallallahu as a serious, proper subject with, a, with its own teachers, its own books and its own examinations and with the focus of applying the lessons from his blessed life in our lives. This is the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent his Nabi and this is the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called his Nabi his Ni'mah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, لَقَدْ مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ بَعَسَ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا مِّنْ أَنفُسِهِمْ يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيُزَكِّهِمْ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ وَإِنْ كَانُوا مِنْ قَبْلُ لَفِي ظَلَالٍ مُبِينٍ which, which, which as you know means Allah said verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed the Mu'mineen. Allah has given them his ni'mah, has given him given them his blessing that he uh, sent to them from amongst themselves his Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Allah mentioned four things yatlu alayhim ayatihi so that he can recite for uh, he recite the revelation to them wa yuzakkihim so that he can, he can purify them internally and externally wa yu'allimuhumul kitab and so that he can teach them his book wal hikmah and so that he can teach them wisdom. And 
these four things they refer to the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yatlu alayhim ayatihi yuzakkihim is to prepare the heart and the body and the mind and the soul to receive this hidayah to receive the guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa yu'allimuhumul kitab to explain this guidance it is not simply sufficient to read it it needs the explanation of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam wal hikmah where hikmah refers to the application of that in our lives how to do it just to give you a, a, a quick and very uh, i think uh, an example which illustrate this very well for example allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said innani ana allahu la ilaha illa ana fa'budni wa aqimis salata li dhikri allah said verily i, I am allah there is no one worthy of worship except me so establish the salah for my remembrance and for my worship and we say as muslims alhamdulillah labbaik allahumma labbaik wallah i'm here i'm ready i'm samaan wa atana we have heard and we are ready to obey now what must we do so this is the tilawat of the ayah has happened now we accept it what must we do and that is where the nabi alayhi salam sallallahu alayhi wasallam comes in and he says purify yourself purify your body by making wudu by doing ghusl purify your clothes make sure the clothes are clean purify the place that you are going to pray in and above all else purify yourself purify your nafs taskiyatun nafs purify your heart purify your soul that you are willing and able to receive the kalam of allah subhanahu wa taala yuzakkihim wa yuallimuhum alkitab how is allah to be worshiped what is the way of worshiping allah subhanahu wa taala allah did not teach us that in the quran allah did not teach us the method of salah allah did not say it starts with qiyam and then there is ruku and then there is sujood there is no there is no sajda before the ruku and there is no ruku after the sajda and then the how does the salah finish allah didn't teach us this and this is not an accident allah subhanahu wa taala could have given us detailed instructions in the quran itself of how he wished to be worshiped allah did not do that because allah subhanahu wa taala wants to establish the importance and the position of his nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam so allah subhanahu wa taala merely gave us the instruction and then he taught his nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam how this instruction is to be obeyed and an rabbi rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam therefore in the beautiful hadith narrated by malik radhiyallahu anhu rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said sallu kama ra'aytumuni usalli nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said pray as you have seen me pray he demonstrated how it is to be done by yu'allimuhumul kitab refers to that while hikma is the actual demonstration of the salah my brothers and sisters i i uh, don't want to uh, uh, extend or elongate this uh, uh, this recording i i know you are uh, may allah bless you for translating this uh, book sira is the answer into tamil may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this a means of guidance uh, for a lot of people and uh, help them to see the life of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the light that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him which is as a formula for success for us in this world today so allah sent his nabi allah called called his nabi a ni'ma allah called his nabi a blessing and wallahi his nabi is a blessing he is the best and the biggest best blessing that allah gave to all of humanity and therefore even more importantly allah gave that blessing to us as muslims we accept the nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam therefore it is essential and important for us to learn about his life and to implement his life in our own lives to implement the lessons from his life in our own lives so that we become standing walking talking models of the way of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so that we become standard bearers of islam and therefore we live in this world as he lived sallallahu alaihi wasallam and as i said the 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 result is a pre is a foregone conclusion what happened in makkah will have and madina will happen inshallah in this world today which is that the muslims will become the most beloved the most influential and the biggest and the best role models for the world but that will not happen by talking that will happen by living by our actions that will happen when we decide to live as muslims as the sahaba ridwanullah alayhi majma'in as they decided i ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept this work that you have done i ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, bless you and to reward you in keeping with his magnificence and and with his grace I ask Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward you in keeping with his generosity. I ask Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala to make uh, this book in whichever language 
uh, it is produced as a means of guidance and as a sadqatul jariya for all those who are associated with it wa sallallahu ala nabiyil kareem wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajmain bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin